Cisco Firepower and Secure Endpoint using Ant Unity. So this is a very quick win, very quick integration. We'll go ahead and hit Amp management and firepower management center we'll go ahead and add an amp cloud connection to endpoint amp and what happens is is firepower becomes an endpoint within endpoint amp and now when we want to make a decision on mitigating risk it'll apply to firepower as well here if you don't add any groups you're going to actually get uh, vent streams from everything i'm going to be selective here and just pick the groups and once we do that, we'll go ahead and hit allow. Now Firepower Management Center is authorized. The state is enabled. Everything looks good. That's really it. Now I'm going to take a little bit step further and I'm going to create a policy. I've already done this, um, but uh, you'll get the idea. It's very quick. I, I just take the default and clone it and copy it or whatever. And then all, all I'm going to do is make sure that I use this simple custom detection list. And so you would build that under outbreak control and custom detection simple. Very, very easy. This is just where you're going to add SHA-256s uh, to that list and block if, um, if, if they're part of that list. So I'll go ahead and save that. And then the other piece is, is that uh, now I've got this policy, I'm going to create a group. Again, what I've done here is just create a group from default and I'm only going to select the network policy here, the one that we just created. I'll save that out and there's nothing really more to do here. But what I'll do is I'll just go into computers and show you that Firepower Management Center now is an endpoint. So we can see here, we can see what groups it's part of. We'll go ahead and add the group that we just created for network and we will move that into that group and that's it and again that's going over and above because there was that default group that was already created now what i'll do is i'll come over here i've got a vpn connection i've got endpoint amp enabled i'm going to drag this file over and and it should copy with no restrictions and so i have a malware policy i have an ips policy that this went through on firepower I'll go ahead and streamline my event viewer here to look at that specific use case. And I can see this mo file monitor event that was triggered. Now, if I go into table events, I get a little bit more information. I'll scroll over to the right here. I can see FTP is the client and continue to scroll. And now I see this files. And if I click on files, now I can see the file name. Now, because they've changed the dark mode, that hasn't been applied here, but you saw that I highlighted it. I can pivot into this now. I'll go ahead and pivot into it and I'll drop it down. This will move me into table events. And from there, what I'll do is I now have a SHA-256. So let's go ahead and copy this SHA and show full text. We'll copy this SHA. And from here, we'll go and do firepower threat response. We'll do a quick investigation and look at that. We see the gateway, firepower saw this file. We saw it on the endpoint. We've got the file name. When we start digging into this, you can see how the screen automatically zooms in and concentrates on our focus. There we go again with endpoint amp. We've got the GUID, the IP address, the MAC address. Now we've got this SHA. This SHA was what we searched on. This is that JRE. We can pivot right into AMP from uh, the AMP event itself from here. And when we do that, we can see FileZilla. That was the parent process. That's what brought it over. And what we could do is take action from here if we wanted to. We could also right click and copy the SHA and do a search here. And we can see that both endpoint AMP on that endpoint that actually copied it using FTP and Firepower Management Center is aware of this file. Now, if I go ahead and click this, there's lots of stuff we can do, right? We can do, we can look at AMP for endpoints. We can get into SecureX and do some orchestration and automation. All I'm gonna do is add it to the custom detection list that we assign. Once I do that, this is the beauty of AMP Unity coming together. 
anything that now is an endpoint object that has that custom detection is going to mitigate this risk. And so now if I copy it over, and you can see it disappeared because there was a retrospective event that happened on the endpoint. It actually removed and quarantined it. But if I try to copy it, what happened was Firepower blocked it. It's now being blocked further upstream, which is better for all of us, right? We don't want to defend at the endpoint. We have to. We'd rather pre prevent upstream. We need to do it at the endpoint, but we prefer to mitigate risk further upstream if possible. There's that file. I looked at the host profile. I got lots of detail and information there. Again, if I pivot, I can see there's that SHA-256. I drill into it. Now I see the file trajectory or network trajectory. I can see there's a malware block. I can see the relationships. Pretty, pretty cool. Now, if I jump over to events, what we'll end up seeing here is probably a retrospective event, a quarantine event on the endpoint for that initial file that we did copy originally. Because we added to that simple detection or custom detection list, it's blocking it everywhere. We pivot into device trajectory. We can learn everything about the device itself and pivot back in the relationships between the processes, both clean to clean and clean to dirty. And there's retrospective quarantine. Magic. If that was a bad file, game over.